Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Encore. I wasn't sure who would be here this week as we wrap up Labor Day weekend. Anybody do anything fun this last weekend? Oh man, I did. I'll tell you about it in a second. But we're here to celebrate Jesus and, and our relationship with each other. We had a great time at the Aqua Sox game last night. There were about 40 of us who went. Here we go. I'm repping, repping the Sox. They have about the weirdest logo ever. A frog? How is that a good... Anyhow, anyhow. I guess you can jump up and try to catch a ball. I don't, I don't know. Anyhow, we had so much fun there last night. Uh, well, but it's great to be back. I missed you guys last Tuesday. We were... Um, we were over in eastern Washington celebrating my daughter Michaela's uh, birthday with her Air Force pilot husband and a couple of my other kids were there and three of our grandkids were there. And as much as I love the cake and ice cream at my daughter's party, my favorite day was actually last Tuesday, right at this time, we were at the Silverwood theme park riding roller coasters. I'll show you some pictures in a bit. But last week, Alicia showed you this picture of me riding. And I just want to tell you, um, that's a totally fake scream, all right? Um, so the whole ride, I'm going, I want one of those crazy looking pictures. And I didn't know where the camera was. So the whole ride, I'm like, oh, you know, sitting next to uh, one of my granddaughters. You can tell she was very excited. Uh, then right in front of me, that's my daughter, Stephanie, and, and her daughter, Zoe. They were having a blast. The most hilarious thing is in the seats behind me, that's my daughter, Michaela, and her husband, who's the Air Force pilot. <laughs> Why does he look afraid of a ride like that? I mean, the, the stuff he's been through, the training he's been on. Um, uh, if you want to know why I can tell, well, I, I'll tell you why. So you go in this particular ride called Tremors, you go into a couple tunnels and the opening isn't that big and he's about 6'5", so you can see he's hunched down like this, going, I don't want to hit my head. But anyhow, uh, it, it, was, it was so much fun, so much fun. So that leads to our just fun table talk starter question. Here it is. What's your favorite ride at one of your favorite theme parks or fairs? You know, what's your favorite ride? If you were to go to Evergreen State Fair or go down to, over to Silverwood or Disneyland, don't, don't go there. But, other, you know, what would be your favorite ride? Okay? So you can share that with the person next to you, and then I'll, I'll get a little bit of your input. All right. Okay, I, I'm curious. Uh, are there any, like, serious roller coaster fans in the crowd this morning? Oh, me too. All right, so I'm going to show... Okay. I'm short on time, but I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep telling stories. So I'm in line for this roller coaster called Aftershock in Silverwood. And there was this lady in front of the line, and she's like really tiny with a cane and, um, you know, missing half her teeth. And, uh, and she's at least 85, and she's with her son, who's older than me. And I'm going, you're, you're going to get on this ride? So I start talking to her. And she's going, I love this ride. Have you been on, you know, Panic Plunge? Yeah. yeah. Have you been on uh, Stunt Pilot yet? Yeah, she was going, she went on all the rides. And I said, well, I, I feel like I'm ready to meet God. Are, are you? She goes, oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, we, we, had, we had so much fun. So much fun. So, uh, favorite rides. Anybody? Oh, not really. She said it's a small world. That's, it's a small world after all. It's a small. That's just not, that's not even a, that's not a ride. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, oh you said, okay, that's, that's a different kind of ride. He said a cruise ship. Zip lines at Whistler. There you go. You're on my team. You're on my team. Yeah, yeah. Zip lines too. We, we need to plan a senior event where we go ziplining. I like that. Lisa? I don't, I, we'd have to, you'd have to sign so many waiver forms, I don't know. I, I, I would love it. Okay, it's so good, like I said, it's so good to be back. I'm gonna turn prayer time over to, to Ke I almost said Carolyn. What's your name again? Kim, here we go.
Hello? This would work better if it worked. Oh, there it goes. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Welcome to September. Hey, I just want to say, today is National Cheese Pizza Day. What a waste of money. What a waste of money. Anyway, so uh, first and foremost, please silence your cell phones so that we don't interrupt uh, Pastor Jeff today or anybody else that might be speaking, like me. And <laughs> so a lot of you commented on my shirt today. It says, uh, I want to be more like Jesus. He took naps. I want to take more naps. So Carolyn, who isn't here, who, by the way, is doing well, she was going to be here today, but she wasn't feeling quite that well today. She asked me five years ago if I like gospel music. Duh. <laughs> and she says, no, southern gospel. And I said, duh. However, duh was right, because I had no idea how good southern gospel music was. And if you ever, ever get a chance to go see Ernie Haas, please do it. <laughs> it it's life-changing. Okay, on we go. So we have a praise request from Kristen Shaw. Oh, wait. We've got new people. Uh, Greg Ryan, welcome. I don't know where you're sitting, but raise your hand and wave. And Donna Ryan is either his daughter or his wife. They live at the same place, so welcome, Donna. Kirsten Nickleby, welcome. Where at you? Where are you at? Yay! Oh, and you're at such a good table. Andrea Bavetz, is that right? Did I say it right? Babitz, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Praise request from Christian Shaw. Thank you for your prayers last week. On Thursday, all three procedures I needed were approved. My surgery is scheduled for Monday, September 25th. With the doctor's approval, we get to go and visit our family in Southern California. So pray for uh, surgery, safety, health, and safe travels. I want to say thank you for your prayers for my daughter. Uh, she was misdiagnosed. Uh, <laughs> Imagine that. Anyway, uh, they told her she had uh, mastoiditis, and they were going to have to remove the mastoid bone that's right behind your ear. As it turns out, they were lying. She has to have her tonsils out. <laughs> so, so, but thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, so, Carol Rice has a prayer request. Carol, I know, right? She's 47. She doesn't get to have ice cream. <laughs> So, Carol Rice has a prayer request. She's looking for a one or two bedroom apartment home, and uh, she needs a washer and dryer in the unit. If you know anybody, if you can pray that she finds it, that would be great. If you know somebody that has it, let me know. I have information for her, for you. Mike and Cindy Welsh uh, both have COVID, so please, pay, please pray for rapid healing. Uh, pray. Uh, this is from Brandy. Please pray for the, her daughter-in-law's family. Uh, the younger brother died this week. Sorry. Gracie, uh, you've been in our prayers for a couple weeks now. Uh, tomorrow is her surgery, so we want to add prayers for her cancer surgery for tomorrow. For rapid healing and no, everything be gone when you wake up. Well, the pain won't be, but it only goes in a couple days. Uh, Prayer for Carolyn's recovery on her shoulder. I don't know who that was from, <laughs> but from all of us. Uh, Lori Galt, please pray for my cousin, Marshall, in Illinois. His oldest daughter suddenly died of a heart attack with no history of heart issues. Uh, wow. So our prayers are with your family. Rodney LaFritz is asking for prayers for his great-granddaughter. You're not even that old, Rodney. Uh, she was taken to the hospital for treatment uh, for suicide thinking and acting her dad um, and was attacking her dad while he was driving home. Oh, so she's a seventh grader. Bob Hadeen, please keep praying for me to get a job soon. Thank you, we will. Elizabeth Henderson uh, is asking for prayers for her son, Nicholas. He came home from the military with bone and skin cancer as he was exposed to lots of chemicals. So we'll pray for healing there. 
Please continue to pray for Sandy Parnell. Her platelets have dropped to a low level again, plus she has high blood pressure. So she's been in our prayers for months. Um, Jill Carvers uh, is a, works at a school here, and the school's freezer dry, uh, died. So <laughs> we pray that they find uh, hope for that. And then Dorothy says, pray for my daughter, Lisa. She has two interviews for jobs this week, so we'll pray that she gets one of those. Please pray for Susan Barcott that her thyroid treatment will be healing. Thank you. That's from Rick Barcott. And Sue and uh, Mike and Sue Griffith are back from uh, either Minnesota or New Mexico. I, MN, so it's your choice. Could be Maine, even. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're glad you're back and we're, and we're glad you're here. I have asked um, Larry Burnell to come up and pray for us today. So, Larry, come on up. And thank you all. Please, if you haven't done so, please turn off your cell phones and let's hope Jeff has a great service. Welcome back, Jeff. Okay. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just ask your blessing over every minute we're here in your house. And we just ask that you would be pleased with all that you see in here and grant favor and grace to those that have all these these needs that we need to be met, Lord. You're a God that can do great things, and you've been good to all of us and our loved ones. And we pray over this message that Jeff gives us and that we learn from that and we serve you all the better. And we just put this whole morning in your hands, thanking you for all the love you've shown each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all can get to your feet as we get ready to worship. Or you can stay seated if you want to. But you got to sing. That's the one condition. Um, you know, I was just, as I was in the back listening um, to all the prayer requests, I was struck by how many of them there are. Um, and those are big prayer requests we're praying for. Um, and as I think through the prayer requests I have in my life right now, um, it can be daunting. Um, and I can tend to get a little bit worried about tomorrow. Um, I'm worried about what might happen what God's plans might be for me. If they're not gonna be like my plans, it might be pretty upset. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that to say though, um, as I was thinking through last night and this morning, um, the set for today, kind of just playing old songs that are gospel. Um, it's just the gospel, it's what Jesus Christ did for us. It's his kingdom here on earth, here and now. Um, and that is the one thing that brings me peace in those things. God is victorious. Jesus conquered death. He conquered sin. He conquered the grave. So we fix our eyes on him. We set our eyes on him. We set our focus on him. That's what it's all about. Let's sing together. Find hope. Find peace in that. As we fix our eyes and set our focus and attention on him. And sing. I cast my mind to Calvary with Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still in We praise his name, we lift him high in this place.
coming back. He's returning. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. With everything you have, we sing. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Again we sing. Thousand generations 
Falling down in worship To sing the song of ages to the Lamb And all who've been before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the Lamb yeah. His name is High It's your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name oh it stands above them all above all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name it stands above them all and the angels cry song forever to the land if you walk in freedom and bear his name and if you walk in freedom oh if you bear his name and sing the song forever to the land we sing the song forever and amen and the angels cry Is the greatest your name it stands above them all above all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name it stands above them all the name of Jesus yeah we sing that your name is the highest in your How great 
the war And then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Would you are great, greatly to be praised Lord, I pray that if this world becomes too much for us, when this world becomes too much for us, we would lean on the fact that it's not too much for you. You've given us power, you've given us your spirit, and you've given us victory in life everlasting. But we thank you for who you are, how you love us, how you enjoy our worship. Pray that everything we do would give worship to you. In your name we pray. Y'all can have a seat. Blessings. Thank you, Michael. That, that's so good. My wife and I, we're, I've told you this, we're doing a Bible reading plan together. And this morning we were in Revelation 14. And there's a lot of judgment in Revelation 14. But there's also a lot of joy in Revelation 14. When we get to stand in the presence of Jesus and actually sing to him face to face our praises. I mean, that is absolutely amazing to think about. Okay, as you heard, I was gone last week in Eastern Washington, I told you this, to celebrate my youngest daughter, Michaela's 31st birthday. How my youngest got to be 31, I have no idea. I, I didn't think I'd be living this long, but she's 31. And look, uh, again, I said it, but as much as I liked her, the cake and ice cream at her party, my favorite day was visiting Silverwood Theme Park with her, her Air Force hubby, you know, a couple of my other kids, three of our grandkids. It was so much fun. Here's a, here's a picture of us at Silverwood. Um, that's the next slide. There we go. Yeah, it, just, it, was, it really was. It was an absolutely fun day. Um, and you may, you may not know this about me, but I am all in roller coasters. The faster, the crazier, the better. Like I said, the more, the more straps and harnesses you have to have on, that means the ride's going to be even more epic. I love, I love that. I, I love it. And I have three favorite rides at Silverwood. I'll do them in reverse order. So number three was the Panic Plunge. Okay, so this thing, you go, uh, it's so much fun. You just go straight up in the air, 140 feet, and then there's this brief pause. And then you fly down, like going 50 miles an hour. Here's, here's a picture of us finishing up after the ride. It was so much fun. I could only talk my, I could only talk my two son-in-laws into going on this ride with me. Uh, nobody else wanted to go. I don't get it. I mean, it's, you know, it's over in just a few seconds. Um, <laughs> you know, my next favorite ride is called Aftershock. Here's a picture of Aftershock. Oh, oh, oh. This ride reaches speeds of 65 miles an hour. At times they say you're pulling four and a half Gs. So you're like right on the edge of, but it, is, it was amazing. So yes, you need to check the battery on your pacemaker and update your will before you get in line for this ride. But it, it is so much fun. Now Aftershock was epic, but my favorite is the newest roller coaster over there called Stunt Pilot. That should tell you a little bit about this ride. Here it is. I mean, it, it is amazing. I mean, you, it's so much fun. You're doing a lot of ups and downs, a lot of swirl arounds, you know, a few 180 degree turns, and there's 105 foot steep drop, and speeds, they only reach about 52 miles an hour on this ride. How many of you have been on this ride? Nobody? No, no, oh, you have? Have you, have you really? Oh. It was amazing. So not many of you went. So here, jump on with me and, and enjoy this. Stunt Pilot is the new RMC single rail Raptor track coaster opening this season at Idaho's Silverwood theme park. The 113 foot tall coaster reaches a top speed of 52 miles an hour on its 1800 feet of track on which riders will experience a dive loop, cutback, corkscrew and overbank curve. Let's take a test run.
That is so much fun. Uh, Lisa, where are you? We need to, that, that needs to be our next event. Yeah, we, we, need, to, we need to get that one on our, on our list. Uh, Aqua Socks was fun, but that, that's amazing. Now you might be going, Jeff, what's the point? What's the point of showing that stuff? And is, it, is there a medic here somewhere? I'm starting to feel a little, uh, uh, well, the point is this. Life is an adventure, right? And it comes with some ups, it comes with some downs, a couple, it comes with some swirl arounds, and some of it is scary at times and fun at times, sometimes both at the same time. But if we trust the maker of the ride and that he's doing constant maintenance and upkeep <laughs> on the ride, we can enjoy even the crazy. And, and oh yeah, you can really trust this ride we call life because the maker of it, God, is sitting right beside us as we go along. So this morning's teaching time is gonna be a lot different than normal. If this is your first time here, uh, boy, please come back next week. But well, actually this might be better than normal, um, but it's gonna be a little bit different. Next week, we're gonna dive back into the Gospel of John. Uh, but as we head into the fall, I wanna give a quick overview of what we are all about in uh, our senior adults ministry called Encore. And I, I want to look at our Encore adventure. So let's pray and then we're gonna dig in. Father, uh, man, I thank you so much for this group, for their love for you, for their love for each other. And this morning, as we look at our calling and the adventure you put us on, help us to get excited. Jump on board for your glory and others' good. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So here's where we're headed this morning. I want us to look at the why we do what we do. I want us to look at the how we do it. And then I want us to look at the go the challenge to actually get on the ride and go. And, and I want you to hear from a couple people who are flying through the roller coaster adventure of life. It's gonna, like I said, this is gonna be a little different, but it should be really fun too. So first, let's look at our Encore why. Here's our core purpose of Encore. The purpose of our Canyon Hills Community Church Senior Adults Ministry, and I don't like that phrase, Senior Adults, but it's clear, right? When you say that, people at least know what you're talking about. But, you know, I, I don't like being called a senior, even though I am one. Anyhow, senior in high school, that's different. What? Senior discount. Senior, well, there's the senior discount part. That's, that's good. All right. So any, anyhow, where was I? Oh, the purpose of, of our senior adults ministry that we call Encore is to make more and better disciples of Jesus by leading and inspiring our adults who are 60 plusers. I kind of like that. To pursue God wholeheartedly, serve passionately, and share the gospel courageously. That's our core purpose. That's what we're about. That's what our church is about. That's what Encore is about too. And it all flows from Jesus' challenge to his disciples then and his disciples now, us, in what's called the Great Commission, which we're all pretty familiar with. And here's the Great Commission. Here's what Jesus said. He said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always on this ride to the end of the age. I added that last part. But see, our goal as a church, our goal as Encore is to help people meet Jesus, know Jesus, and then to follow Jesus, which is another way of saying our goal is to make more and better disciples, which begs the question, What's the subject of this command that Jesus gives us that we would call the Great Commission? Look at it again. What do you think the most important word there is? Go, disciples, baptize, teach. What do you think the, what do you think the, the subject of this command is? To me, it's the word them. Pop quiz. Who is Jesus telling his disciples to go to? Them. Who, who are we supposed to make disciples out of? Them. Who are we supposed to baptize? Them. Who are we supposed to teach? Them. Then if the point is that, who are the thems? Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus, them would be anyone who is not yet currently in the category of us, right? I used to be a them. But then when I put my faith in Jesus and became, I became part of us, you know, Christ followers, 
Anybody, are you tracking with me? I know, this is, this is a little bit weird. And if you're here this morning and you're still a them, please don't be offended by this. Jesus is all about the them. I'm all about the them. He loves us all where we are, but his desire is to move us from the them into the us as friends of Jesus, right? But the, but the them is our number one mission as Christ followers. Listen, there is no plan B. If you are a follower of Jesus... You're God's plan to change the world. What's his plan for reaching the world? It's you. In fact, point to the person next to you and say, it's you. Yeah, it's you. Now, you might be thinking, he should have come up with a better plan than, than, than me. But, but here's the beautiful thing. We are his plan. And we are all, and I use that word, we are all missionaries in a sense. Missions is across the world, absolutely, but it's also across the street. You and I are called to be his witnesses, his missionaries to the world. So who in your life that you know does not yet know Jesus? It's our adventure role to represent Jesus to them. We can't lose sight of the fact that is our mission. That is the adventure we're called to. Is to get to know Jesus better ourselves and then get... To, and then be his representative to those around us. Could it be that God in his grace, and quite frankly in his sense of humor, that he's put somebody else in your life that doesn't know him so that you can be a witness to them about him and give them the opportunity to respond to his love and his grace, to respond to his friend request in a sense. I think so. In fact, I, I know so. He wants to use us to do that, right? And sometimes I think when we get involved in the church, we lose track of that. And we start to focus on the us. And we need to remember, no, 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 no. Our purpose is them. Now, us is important too. Don't, don't get me wrong. Please hear me. But we are his plan to reach the world. We all had somebody who shared Jesus with us. And he, God, may want to use you to be that someone in someone else's life. So you might go, well, well, what's the big deal? Well, when we come to Jesus, it changes everything. Right? Um, I want to introduce you to uh, one of our Encore members. Jim, where are you? Come on up. Um, who radically had his life changed for Jesus. <laughs> this, is, this is Jim Reef. And uh, yes, he's the, basically the leader of the rowdy table in the back. Uh, and I just want Jim to share a little bit of his testimony with us. So, man, I, I love you, brother. Oh, I love you too. You. Oh, man. Okay, so that's on. Just hold it up to your mouth so that they can hear you. Good morning. Or maybe it got turned off. <laughs> is, it, is it on? Okay, it's on. All right. All right. So first, Jim, where did you grow up? I grew up, uh, I was born in Iowa. We came here, I grew up in White Center, which is just kind of more popular uh, thing is Rat City. Uh, pretty tough uh, area. I lived in a project called Lakeside, which was uh, a low-income home. Okay, all right. Now, anybody who knows you at all knows that you served in the Marines. You were in, in Vietnam. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about that experience? Because I know that radically affected your life. Amen. I was 17 years old. Uh, I landed in Vietnam in uh, December of 65. Uh, I got out in, uh, of Vietnam in uh, March of 66. And in, in the meantime, there was a lot of uh, chaos going on. Uh, I knew about Jesus, uh, but I uh, didn't really practice it, being a Catholic. Uh, and then uh, I started thinking, well, why am I here? Well, I didn't know at the time that Jesus was right next to me all the time. And when some of my friends uh, were uh, put to rest, I wondered why them and not me when I was right next to them. So I never realized that, uh, that Jesus was, had a purpose for me. He wasn't done with me and that uh, I kind of forgot about some of that I, when I got home. 
And uh, so there was a lot of chaos in Vietnam and a bunch of men there, if you know that. So, that was my first experience uh, in why them and not me. And when I get older, as I matured more, I finally understood why. Okay, so back to Vietnam for just a second. Yeah. You're a Purple Heart veteran. Right. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, we were uh, guarding a supply. It was called, uh, uh, we had five Antraks, which are weapons carriers, and we had three tanks. We were told that the Viet Cong supposedly had nothing to take them out. Well, we got ambushed when we were taking the supplies to the front lines and got lost by our leader. And so we were pinned down in the man tracks that got stuck in the mud in the rice paddies, blew up two of the tanks, and there were 66 of us. Six of us came back. And there were a lot of good men that I knew that didn't come back, but why did I? Exactly, yeah. And uh, that was just one of the battles we fought, which we were in the anthrax for 24 hours, 100% humidity, 142 degrees. And uh, the Lord saved the six and uh, brought us back. So. Yeah. It's a, a tough time in my life. Yeah, I know. I, I, can't, I can't imagine, Jim. Now, most people don't know this, but you're headed off to New York pretty soon, right? Right. To, uh, to a big uh, event honoring Purple Heart veterans. And right. each of the 50 states chose one Purple Heart veteran to represent their state. And you were chosen to represent our state of Washington. I was. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they, uh, they, it was all expense paid trip to uh, New York. Uh, we're going to uh, have five days there. I uh, have to have a, uh, an interview with uh, a film crew. They're going to film some of this stuff and put it in the archives so yeah. our kids, our grandkids, anybody who knows us can go punch in our name and they're going to be able to see that video of. Uh, Forever. Well, that's so. pretty cool. I think they made a good choice. Thank you. In, in sending you, absolutely. Now, now the most important question, the biggest question. Give us sort of the elevator version of how you came to Christ. Okay. Well, first, I better start out real quick with saying uh, I met my wife uh, at the time before, and we were waiting to, well, we were watching the hydroplane races, and we were at a mutual friend's house. And we got together, and a week after we met her, I asked her to marry me. She and, said yes? What? She didn't know what she was doing okay, at the time. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, her brother was a Baptist minister in Western Oregon. I, he would come up, or we'd go down, and he'd preach to us. And, you know, you say yes, but you just forget about it once he's gone. And I told him, I said, if you ever come have a church in Seattle or in the area, let me know. About six months later, he said, Jim, I'm starting a church in Everett. Well, I'm a man of my word, so <laughs> I went to church. And the more I went to church, the more... I wanted to know more. And he was a very good preacher, and he gave me more, me and my wife, and uh, me and Carnal, my wife, accepted Christ at the same time. Uh, I built the baptismal to be baptized in, because it was a little church in a daycare. Uh, and that wasn't, uh, I accepted Christ, but I still wasn't living like Christ. Uh, the stuff that went on in my life, uh, I was an alcoholic, I drank a lot. And uh, tried to self-medicate a lot. One day, my wife came up to me and told me, you either take, you gotta choose between our two sons and her or the booze. I chose my family 
And I also realized that God had been with me this whole time. Yep. And that he took the, the I never went to AA, never went to counseling. I haven't had, I quit drinking that day and haven't drank since, which has been 45 years ago. I knew that Christ had a, a plan for me and my wife, of course. And now I have a PTSD Bible study on Wednesday at my house and uh, feed the homeless on Saturday. And I witnessed to some of the people that, uh, no offense to anybody here, wouldn't be able to even talk to, let alone try to save them. Right. Uh, so I take care of them. Everybody has it, who they can, who they can witness to. So now I know what my goal is, what God's goal is for me, and why he saved me from all, the, uh, all of this. Yeah. And then we come to this church. This is the most friendly church we've ever been in. When we walked in, we felt the Holy Spirit. And as a group, as a group, to me, I look forward to being here more on Tuesdays than I do sometimes Sunday. Which, <laughs> especially you, Anita. You got the best hugger. Uh, but that's, that's my story, okay. and I'm sticking to it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No. Man, I, I, I love you, brother, and, and I love the rowdy table, too. We need more rowdy tables. Um, now, I brought Jim up on purpose. My hope is that his story will inspire some of us. One, to grow deeper in our own personal faith, but two, to play a part in somebody else's life adventure. I mean, that's quite the roller coaster Jim's been on. But like he said, he has a purpose now. And what's his purpose? Yeah. Right there. Go and make more and better disciples. I love it. Okay, so back to the big why of Encore. Here are our core values. And this should be a whole other message. I'm just going to just rush through them this morning. So, yeah, be patient with me. Here are our core values. Number one is to glorify the Lord in everything, seeking to please him first and foremost. I know that's a duh, but we have to start there, right? That's, that's what we're about. Number two is to display unconditional love for each other, reaching out to include all senior adults, those within Canyon Hills and those outside the church. Our purpose is to reach more than just the people here, but to reach into our community as well. Number three, our core value is to encourage 60-plusers at Canyon Hills to be involved in community with other Christ followers for encouragement, support, spiritual growth, accountability, and fun. We need each other. In some community, a lot of great community happens right here, but we even need a closer community outside of here. Number four, we exist to support and intentionally care for the vulnerable members of Encore and help meet their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. We're here for each other. We don't do as good a job of this as we need to. One of my goals in this year is to do a better job of this, but that's definitely one of our core values. And then number five is to provide an environment where each Encore member is encouraged and supported to apply their God-given talents and spiritual gifts in service for God's glory. That's why we exist. I see, I want Encore to be a place where when you come each week, you know, we get to worship God, we get to be taught from his word, and we get to be encouraged, and we get to encourage others. I want us to be a place where when we're done, you don't want to go. But we just want to hang and talk and get to know each other even, even better. Now, we have to go. I, I get that. But I, I want this to be a place where there's just, it's just a room full of encouraging love for each other. Okay. Now I want to show you a couple of what I call our, our foundational verses that we build on. First one is Psalm 92, verse 12. But the godly will flourish like palm trees and grow strong like the cedars of Lebanon. No I can show you they're amazing trees. In my heart, they trans holy, holy. They flourish in the courts of God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will be vitally green. They will the Lord is just. He is my rock. There is no evil in Him. I love that. I mean, that David includes a line like this, but then I do. 
Hey, God's not done with us yet until we're done. You know, he uses that, that term. Even in our old age, you know, they're still going to produce fruit. That's why I love about why we've named this ministry on the like is until we're done. We're not done. God puts us back up on stage for our encore. In fact, as we get older, I think God wants us to get older. Oh, I kind of like that. As, as we get older, God wants us to get even bolder the with our faith. Of all and here's the second verse fills his that temple. comes to my mind. In Psalm 145. And we tremble. Verse 3. Great is the Lord and great is the Lord. Oh, my heart and in his, cries holy, and his great is the unsearchable. One generation shall commit and worship my soul to another and shall declare your name. Worthy is your name. That's what we're doing. It it's a great reminder oh, that we are going to that God can and will keep using us as we focus on the how and the why. Uh, so let's do a quick how. You know, some, some of this is, this, this is how we try to accomplish those core values. Some of this is up and running and some of it is my dream to up uh, our Encore Adventure some. But first, we want to engage others. We want to create activities and events that engage our senior adults and give opportunities to invite and build relationships with other seniors. So we want to do special Earth events. You know, on with Tuesdays your time, we have our special days or outreach events. Be lifted up. You know, be lifted up. Uh, built around interests and hobbies. The whole earth is filled with your glory, God. Be lifted up. We're not totally there yet. Be lifted seminar and uh, next week or the week after we'll have some of the leaders come in and talk a little bit more about that <clears throat> but if you're interested boy I'd say yeah go ahead do that so we want to engage people to be involved and then through Encore we want to equip them and then lastly we want to deploy people into service we want to deploy people into service we want to encourage and provide opportunities for Encore members to encounter God and others by becoming actively involved in serving the Lord in our church, our community, and our world. Now, there, there we go. And I know I went through that way too fast. There's so much there. But that leads to our big final point for this morning. We looked at the why. We looked at the how. Now let's look at the go. <laughs> at the go. We want everyone... Again, to get back up on stage for their encore, whatever that looks like, it's going to look different for each of us. Or to use this morning's illustration, we want everybody to jump on God's roller coaster adventure that he's planned for you. Now, you shouldn't just be watching the coaster roll around. We need to jump on. And that's where the fun really begins. And again, it'll look different for all of us. But I'd encourage you, find a place where you can serve. You know, it might be, you know, through one of our Encore teams, through our FIT team, our First Impression team, you know, by being a greeter or helping with coffee or the treat team or serving on our prayer team, our events team, our care team. You know, it might just be every Sunday walking in or every Tuesday walking in on purpose and looking for people to encourage. 
That's a really important ministry. Really important. You know, it might be, you know, you might get involved by serving in our church in some way. Or maybe even by jumping on the coaster and going on an encore go trip, global outreach trip, missions trip. I'll get back to that in a couple minutes. But first, I want to introduce you to a couple of our global outreach partners. Uh, and so this is where we need to stop the recording, okay? Encore, now, next, this is really important. I am so excited to tell you what we've been, that I've been working on with our global outreach team. We've been working on an Encore team overseas missions trip. Are you ready for this? We, we're going to take a team of Encore members to Chile, or Chile, however, you, however they say it, April 5th through the 12th, so it'll be a relatively short trip. That's in, uh, what, well, next year. <clears throat> so I think it's the week after Easter, but it'll be like April 5th through the, to the 12th. We'll be partnering with our global outreach partners there, Doug and Shelly Kalstad, who I've known for a long time. They, they work mostly out of Santiago, which is down south. You can kind of see it on the map there. We're going to take a team of about 15, pretty physically active, of us. Um, we, we've already got three who are going for sure. But we're still working on all the details of what we'll be doing, but our team will be there to encourage and serve the people and the church there. And we'll be doing some light construction, mostly painting, I think. <clears throat> and we'll be working with the church to set up a ministry to the older generation there, which is kind of, they're sort of outcast, and they want to use that as an outreach opportunity. I'm going, man, that would be just so awesome for us to share a little bit of our story and some of our testimonies. We'll also be doing some teaching and interaction with a kids ministry that they have called House of Hope, where they minister to kids without parents. And we'll also be visiting um, some areas around there just to experience the Chilean culture. Again, we're still working out all the details and some of the details and what we do will depend on, on who is on our team. Now to go, you need to be a regular attender of Encore and uh, our church. You need to be able to lift some things, you know, at least about 10 pounds worth of stuff and you need to be able to walk three to five, three to five miles a day. We're gonna be actually having to do quite a bit of walking. Um, we'll, you'll need to fill out an application, which you can do starting this afternoon. In fact, it's already up online, and the registration will end September 26th. Uh, so you've got about three weeks to, to sign up. You'll need to raise some funds to pay for your trip, but don't let that scare you. We'll tell you how to do that and help you do that. And I'm guessing that this room will pay for most of the trip for the people who go. I'm excited about that. And then once the team is chosen, we'll have several meetings, five to eight different meetings, I think, that'll prepare us for our adventure. I'm so excited about that. Both of my daughters have been to uh, Chile, to Santiago. <clears throat> my daughter Stephanie has been there seven times. Um, uh, and, and the stories she told me about ministry there is absolutely amazing. Now, it's a, it's a relatively safe place. It's a city area, so they have actual hospitals that are trustworthy. <laughs> Not that anything's going to happen to me, but um, who knows. Uh, uh, now, I mean, you probably know this, but I am all in missions. And I tell people all the time, if I can talk them into going into a short-term missions trip, I'll never have to convince them about the importance of missions again. I'll never have to convince them to give to missions, and God's going to call some of them away. And you guys experienced that. And I can't tell you how many people are on the field because they went on a short-term missions trip uh, with me. I'm really excited about that. <clears throat> now, um, <clears throat> we've, so like I said, we finally have our first adventure on the books, but it won't be our last one. But our first global outreach adventure is now in the books. And if you'd like to apply, uh, you can fill out the application and you just need to go to canyonhillsgo.org, right there. And when you, when you click on that, then it takes you to the church's website, to the, to the missions website. You'll see a couple different uh, missions trips that are there. And you just click on the, the one to Chile, and then you can fill out the application. And if you, need some, if you have questions or need some help filling out the application, you can talk to me or Lisa, and we can probably help you do that. And we'll leave this up on the screen so that you can write that Write that down if you want. And I'll send a, a link to this on our uh, weekly email that goes out tomorrow. So there you go. It was a weird morning, but not bad, right? Pretty cool. This, this is, 
This is the short version of our Encore adventure, but it's a cool version. And that's the why, the how, and the go. Now, in regards to our next go, our first go trip, like I said, you can be involved in three ways, either go or give or pray. All of them are equally important. And I'm so excited about that. So just thank you for being a part of what God is doing here. Never stop praying, never stop bringing your friends, and never jump out of the roller coaster. That won't end well, all right? Let's pray. Father, uh, my heart really is excited to think about what you're going to do through this amazing group of people. And I pray that you would help us to live out our purpose of making more and better disciples, starting right here, starting right now. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, Jim and James and Tanya, thank you for sharing parts of your story. Next week, we'll be back in the Gospel of John, and we'll be in the second half of chapter 19 and looking at the most important day of history for us. You don't want to miss next Tuesday. That's going to be really special. All right. If you didn't pick up our new September newsletter, you can pick one up on, on the way out. And uh, today is the last day to sign up for the Veterans Breakfast. Is that right, Lisa? And Joyce can help you do that right there. All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much for coming. And if you'd like to be prayed for, we'll have a couple of our prayer team members up front. And they would love to, to talk with you and pray with you. All right. God bless you. Let's go.